Yo, 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 another day, another dollar with your homeboy Jermaine and getting this vlog started off, just knocked out the first caviar delivery. I had no plans on using Scoot today, but this morning when I woke up, I discovered that I left my keys and the pants I was wearing yesterday, so I don't have the keys to my electric bike. I have the keys to the actual bike lock here, but I don't have the keys for the motor part, so it would just really suck riding that bike around with no motor on, and I'm not gonna ride that bike around right now. So I'm uh, about to hop back on Scoot here and get ready to head back downtown and see what's popping that way. Yo, let's get this video started. Not bad for the first caviar drop off. All right, just dropped the scoot off, and honestly, I really don't like to use the scoot app anymore, and I'm gonna talk about that right now. Number one, the pricing is much higher than what it was when I first started using it. It used to be $2 for a half hour, now it's $4 for a half hour. Another problem I just discovered with Scoot, now this may not be a bad thing, this is actually a good thing, but maybe it's just a bad thing for carriers. Looks like they've added a whole bunch of scoots like to the city recently. And the reason why I say that, about a couple weeks ago when I would request Scoot, whenever you request Scoot, you, you, you pick where you're gonna pick it up at and you also pick where you're gonna drop it off at. Usually when I um, pick the drop off location, I pick the same place where I picked up from. I usually never take it back to the same drop off location because if the Scoot dies over here, I'm gonna go over here and pick up another Scoot, swap it out, that sort of thing. So usually when I'm in the daytime and when I'm downtown, I never really look at the map to see if I can like drop the Scoot off there. I'll just like roll up to the garage and you know, I'll see like three or four empty spots and then I'll tell the app I'm switching my location. Earlier this morning when I tried to do that, because every 30 minutes they bill you, so I rushed down to this one location, and I'm thinking, oh, wow, there's only one spot available at noon. Wow, there's a lot of scoots around. I'm thinking, wow, there's only one spot available at 1 p.m. Wow, well, what's up with this? And then I pull out my map, and like all the locations in Soma are like full of scoots. I'm wondering why are all these scoot locations full of scoots? Maybe they must got a whole bunch of new scoots in, which is a really good thing for carriers because you can easily switch out your scoot. But in my case, I didn't want to switch the freaking scoot out. I just wanted to drop it off, and it was really difficult. Now I'm way over here dropping the scoot off in this location, and then I need to walk back, I think, what, seven blocks to go back to WeWork where I came from. Yeah, you see the inconvenience I'm talking about? I don't know. Next. I remember when Scoot first started off, it was really small, and you, you actually had to live in the city to use Scoot. Like, if you lived in the East Bay, you couldn't. But now I feel like they're getting bigger and bigger, and those prices are going up. I'm not complaining, but I'm just noticing, and I'm thinking of alternative ways to get around the city. Because, dude, Scoot is one really, really great way to get around the city. You don't have to worry about the buses, you don't have to really worry about the traffic as much. There's still a very, very, very high chance of, uh, you know, you getting hit by a car and dying, but if you don't worry about that one, um, Scoot's a really good way to get around town. Yo, back at WeWork now, and I already know I'm about to get a whole bunch of dislikes for this, but go ahead, if you don't dislike this video, go ahead and do it. It'll probably make you feel better about yourself. But anyway, I was just walking down from the falafel spot and bro, that line is so long because it's straight up the middle of lunchtime. So I just did the laziest thing in the world. I just ordered Uber Eats from Flying Falafel, which is not even a block down the street. But once again, it would be faster if I ordered the food and have it delivered here than if I went down there and waited in line. That's the only reason I'm doing this. If I went down there and waited, it would be about 30 minutes to me to wait out there in the wind. And it's it's chilly out there. It's not like, it's not 30 degrees or anything, but like it's chilly. It's not like a hot summer sunny day or that type of deal. But yeah, ordering one more boring falafel once again. Dude, I gotta like switch up my diet or something. I know that I've been receiving so much hate from the vlog from two days ago talking about, should I talk about vegan food or whatever? Maybe I was sitting, I was thinking of just like not even talking about vegan food on this channel, but then starting a whole another channel to just talk about vegan food on that channel. But then I thought about that's actually a really hot topic to talk about, and I wouldn't want to like start a new channel and then just abandon this channel because that would be really, really bad. But maybe I'll just still like make another channel, and that way I can only talk about vegan stuff on that channel, and I won't have to talk about the slave economy. I mean, the sharing economy, same thing. But yeah, next. Yo, just here, we work on the computer, about to get ready to um, bounce up out of here. 
I've just been on Tinder for a little bit and I've just been going back and forth with um, some messages. You can always tell the fake girls on Tinder and how you can tell fake girls on Tinder, just look at their profile and they may have like one or two photos and there's nothing in the description. There's no Instagram accounts, there's no n nothing. It's just like a blank account for the most part. So when this girl messaged me, like I already knew what was up because I can tell by just the profile. Hello, Jermaine, how are you? In the city, what about you? I'm kind of being nonchalant because I already know that like, this is like someone trying to get me to go to some website and pay. Then she says, I'm good, just bored. And I ask, are you real? Her response was, I was gonna stop using this. You wanna keep talking? This is what they always say. And then my response is, let me guess, you want me to sign up for some website, question mark. All right, so let's see what she says now. It's probably going to be, oh, go to this website, and for twenty nine ninety five, you can talk to me. Why would I want to talk to you for 30 bucks? Today on Tinder hasn't been a good day. I've um, definitely made a few matches here. Oh, i got to read this one. What's she talking about? Oh, I never responded. Oh, that other girl just responded back. Let's see what she says. Message me on Skype. My name is see it's always a scam like if I go message her on Skype She's gonna be like oh PayPal me money to this bank account in China or it's gonna be like some scam Like I totally know like I can just tell by the format of The profile whenever you see a profile like this like come on 22 years old two photos three photos and there's nothing in the description. It's a scam. Like, it's just sketchy. Like, so trying to vlog right now. It's so windy, but it's not exactly windy right here. Let me fill you guys in. So, I've been in WeWork for a little bit. Too much time. More time than I should have spent on Tinder. But you know what? I actually scored a date out of it. So, I'm going to meet up with this chick now. Bro, so the females that I meet on Tinder are like, they're just totally opposite from me. Like, I always meet girls that, that don't travel, girls that are not vegan, chicks that, you know, live at home with their parents. It's just the total opposite, right? So this girl is, um, once again, it's total opposite. Like, this is like a big chick, and uh, I know my ex-girlfriend wasn't the smallest chick, but like, honestly, like, I, I don't know. I'm not really looking for, I'm looking for someone my size, basically. I'm looking for someone who can run a mile, someone who can flexible someone who's a freak in bed and you know uh, I guess that ain't got nothing to do with being small but uh, next so we've been chatting online for a couple hours she's like yo what are you up to right now and I'm like yo I'm down at WeWork you wanna meet up come down here have some beers or whatever cuz you know at WeWork you get free beer like 24 7 or something like that majority of the day you get free beer and um, she was like no 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 I'm actually going to this bar over in the Castro and I was like oh really um yeah what what bar you know and she's like I'm going to Q bar if you don't know anything about the Q bar in the Castro and everybody in San Francisco Q bar is it's a gay bar but on Monday and Tuesdays or on Monday nights it's international night and believe me out of the three years I've lived in here I've actually hooked up with more chicks out of Q bar on international night than I have any other bar in San Francisco, Kimban, and she was like, yeah, I'm going to Q-Bar, and I was like, yo, um, you want to meet up or something? And she was like, yeah, come on down to q -bar. She was like, yeah, come on down to Q-Bar. So my whole idea is, um, you know, honestly, I don't know what to expect out of this, but you know what? She says she's bringing some friends, and you know what? What if she has cute friends, right? I wouldn't want to miss out, and uh, we can also chill, hang out. Maybe she could be fun to talk to for a second. Funny thing about the Castro, they actually paint on the um, crosswalks like rainbows. It's like super creative. I've never seen any place else that do that. Yo, so sorry to offend any of my homophobic subscribers, but yeah, this is definitely the Castro, and um, it's probably not the straightest part of the city if you know what I'm saying. If you know what I'm saying, I'm gonna go inside and meet up with this chick from Tinder and. Uh, see what happens. It's a little weird. I'm meeting up with a chick at a gay bar that I met off a website like two hours, three hours ago. Huh. City life. City life. Yo, the quick recap that just happened at the bar. So it's, uh, it's a little bit later now. Jermaine is a little buzzed and Jermaine is all in one piece. This chick actually wanted me to go back to her parents' house. She wanted me to chill. She wanted me to eat pork stew and pork beef and pork like two other things that I can't remember what she said, but I'm not cool with that for for now I'm gonna just gonna go back to the spot where I'm staying. So I think I'm gonna just request an Uber really quick because I need to get back there really fast or is there a train right there? Maybe I can jump on that train. 
So now I can still jump on this train. I'm gonna walk down here and see how long the train's gonna take. If it's like longer than 10 minutes, I'm probably just gonna go back upstairs and jump on a taxi or Uber. And what is the time right now? It is. And as you guys can see, it's gonna take nine minutes for the next train to get here. So you are, I just spotted a taxi over here. So what I did is I cut my phone on brightness and I'm gonna like try to flag them fools down. Be like, yo, I need a ride real fast. I need a ride real fast. Flywheel, Flywheel, give me a ride, bro. I need a ride. I'm tired of being out on the street, bro. Hold. No, he's, he's got someone. That must be one of those independently wealthy cab drivers. Independently wealthy? Independently wealthy cab drivers? Yeah. They got those? Back inside, it's super warm, I'm feeling good, and I'm just checking out some of the YouTube stats, and I don't know what's up with YouTube. One thing I didn't include in this vlog about earlier today, I actually received a phone call from YouTube, like someone from the corporate office of YouTube, and if you know anything about YouTube corporate, YouTube headquarters is actually here in the Bay Area. It's in San Bruno. Maybe it's 20 minutes from my location right now where I am is like YouTube headquarters. I received a phone call from the YouTube headquarters in San Bruno. I actually saw the number pop up on my phone and I saw the area code and I was thinking, oh yeah, this is a San Bruno area code. Maybe this is TaskRabbit or maybe this is iCrack because TaskRabbit and iCrack, they use the same similar numbers. They use like San Bruno area codes, that sort of thing. I answered the phone and I talked to, you know, this awesome gentleman on the phone and he was like, yeah, 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 we got this, we got that going on, we got this going on, I'm going to send you this email, I want you to sign up for this program, it's going to be really good, it can really help out your channel, it can get you more subscribers, more views, more searching, you know, optimization, that sort of thing, and I was like, yeah, 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 awesome, 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 great, send me that information over. <laughs> Yo, today has been another roller coaster. Roller coaster. All of my days are like roller coasters. Let me take this hoodie off. All of my days are like roller coasters. I love these roller coaster days. I love riding the roller coaster. It's just like so random. All my days are so random. I woke up this morning, had no idea I would do any of this stuff. I could have just did caviar if I would have woke up this morning and had my bike keys because it's Monday and Monday is usually a decent day to do caviar. I could have went out and did a handful of caviar gigs. Yeah, I didn't do any TaskRabbit gigs today. A few people reached out to me on TaskRabbit, but like one gig was to drive a car to like the shop and I'm not going to drop someone's car. And then another gig was like, I don't, I don't know, like it was, they, Another gig was like, um, they said that like another tasker was there and that tasker had to leave at three and they wanted me to show up at four and they wanted me to like put bulbs into like something and I was thinking, I don't know. So I, I emailed the customer, I messaged, I messaged. I messaged the customer, I said, hey, um, can you give me a little bit more info about the job? The customer never responded, so I just, you know, hit the TaskRabbit app, customer is not responding, and I was able to forfeit the job without, you know, hurting my acceptance rating or anything, but yeah, that was about it for that. But I don't know, we'll have to see what happens tomorrow, because tomorrow's gonna be a whole different roller coaster. Who knows what's gonna go down tomorrow? Wake up tomorrow, do this whole thing, and they're gonna run it. It's gonna be sunny. Hopefully, it's not super windy, like. <gasps> but anyway, yo, thanks a lot for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace out, yo.